Yes, I am good. So um, just to give you a brief background before I start, uh, I used to maintain a project called as Libc Group. Uh, how many of you guys know what C groups are? Okay, great. So you know, I was involved in the initial effort to develop C groups, have it you know go into the Linux kernel, work with the uh, scheduler, and then all of this great stuff is there. And then we realized that you know what, there is no way to use it from user space. And you know, we reached this point. Uh, somebody, uh, my manager, I guess, or maybe it was my mentor, got this bright idea. We need to, we need to write this library. Uh, Oh, so you know, before I continue, I love hyperbole, so you know, take this with a lot of salt. Uh, kernel developers, oh yes, yeah, so, so the first thing we learned, I learned, is kernel developers do not make good library developers. Um, we have no idea how our programmers, uh, how the programmers, how the users want to use it. So in, in our case, uh, we had one user and we designed it for this one user and then, you know, Nobody else liked the way it worked. And, and, and funny story, we're we at this point, we, have, we, we need to get it out in time for it to make it into uh, an enterprise distro. Um, and funny enough, other people are interested in the project and they're sending us patches um, and stuff I have written is not building fine. Um, so I'm, I'm spending time trying to fix all of that and, and I start getting nasty emails from these guys. Are you only going to pick up, I, I was working for IBM at that point in time, I started getting nasty emails from them saying, are you only picking up IBM batches? <laughs> I'm like, uh, so, so one important lesson I learned at that point in time is don't ignore your community. Uh, a second lesson uh, is I, you know, I like volunteer contributors, but as a maintainer, you will realize that uh, volunteer contributors are going to contribute and they're going to go away. Uh, you need to be in a position that you can maintain that code. Uh, so generally you will find that you, the, the contributors who are backed by industry tend to be a lot more reliable. Uh, you know, their code quality might not be the best, but you know they're gonna come back and uh, work with you. That's not a given, by the way, uh, as many people have pointed out. Um, so I, have, I have a couple of other interesting anecdotes around this. So. Uh, one thing I have learned is kernel space programming is a lot, lot easier than user space. Uh, and a big, an example I love giving is systemd. How many of you love systemd? How many of you hate systemd? Oh, okay, that's, that's surprising, there are very few here. Uh, because just about everywhere I go, the crowd I hang out with, it is a very polarized world. Right, it, it either sucks or does not suck. Uh, and you know, I, it's, it's hard to keep people happy is what I'm trying to get to. Uh, and, and, and with kernel space, it's, it's very clear who your users are. With, with user space, you don't know how it's going to get used. Uh, and, and as an example, what happened is uh, we had this uh, smart idea, this bright idea that you know, uh, with C groups, people would like atom, uh, automated resource control. So, uh, you know, for example, uh, I believe, uh, let's say you're doing Bitcoin mining, uh, and you don't want it to, you know, use up all your CPU when, let's say, you are playing a game. Um, and so you could actually set it up that uh, it would get its own um, CPU resource group, and it would only get 20% uh, of CPU time when you're using it, and at some other point in time, it, it gets all the CPU time. However, uh, we started getting uh, feature requests you know, feature requests on using it in many different ways as where we had started from. And, and that is again something we learned the hard way that uh, trying to predict where the user is going to go to and uh, how they're gonna use software is something, uh, and especially open source software, is something that you cannot, uh, well, kernel developers are not good at. Um, the, Remember I said that, uh, earlier on I said that library development, kernel developers are not good at it. Two examples, uh, systemd when it started. So I actually was involved in the initial discussions around systemd. And at that point in time, you know, when Leonard came to me, I told him, you know what, you could just use lib C group to uh, control your C group work. And he started using it. 
and you know that is a point in time we we understood how badly the api was designed uh, and at some point in time he just decided to you know reimplement it in a system d itself which was actually a, something really good i could stop paying attention to lipsy group um, so that, there was that incident and then you know distros when you are the upstream maintainer of a distro uh, sorry of a of a project working with distributions can sometimes be hard uh, not because distributions are wrong but uh, many a time the uh, packager will not be a contributor to your project does not know how to debug the issue or maybe has not understood how a feature works has set wrong default settings and then users start coming to you and start complaining uh, funny story uh, have, have you guys heard of jack okay so Yes, the audio thing. So, so Jack uses real time uh, quite a bit in order to uh, get its scheduling guarantees. And at that point in time, CPU resource control had a real time resource controller. And you know, by default, the kernel would set it to 95%. Um, now, what libc group would do is on boot up, it would create a uh, default resource container which is where every process would go so that you know let when you move your process somewhere else you everybody else has something that's actually properly allocated to it and the jack process went in there now red hat maintainers were working with us they knew that uh, the default setting had to be set to something sane the ubuntu folks were not and so it was set to zero and suddenly jack's not working anymore and you know you have all of these complaints coming up and you know i come in and i say somebody pointed it out to me and i send an email to the jack mailing list saying hey i know what's happening you need to do this you need to take these steps and everything will be fine and i thought you know what i did a great job i helped out another project and now i go back to ubuntu and tell them to fix stuff <laughs> instead i got these 100 emails saying why did you do this you broke my setup <laughs> And, and it went on, and some of these emails were pretty nasty. And at that point in time, I was not working for IBM, so it, it was essentially I was volunteering my own unpaid time to this project. So, you know, I, I started talking to the project maintainer, and I thought, you know, I hit reply, except this this mailing list had a setting where when you hit reply, it it replaced the reply to address with the mailing list address. So I had this email where I meant talk to him. I told him that look, you know, I, I don't see, I I want to do this for you guys, but I I really don't see the reason I should do it because you know, it's it's upsetting. And this email, which you're supposed to go to the maintainer of the project, went to the list publicly. <laughs> uh, I actually got a lot of supportive emails at the end of it, but uh, sorry, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was like oh no, it's gone to the list. Uh, Yes, it does. <laughs> Somebody should fix it. <laughs> it's considered a, a fix to bug. Sorry? It's a fix to another bug. Is it? Yes, because because you're, not allowed to, yeah, so, you're not allowed to do forwarding anymore. It's, the stuff that you Oh, is it? Tim or whatever it is, I don't know. Yeah, mailing list for 2017. Please don't make like mailing list maintainers are the greatest people in the world. Let them Set up whatever they have to set up. Leave them alone. <laughs> right. So I, this is loosely the same story. Right. They're, your tail of oh crap, people are people are dumping on me because right. I I tried to do something. Mailing list maintainers are the are in the same place. Yeah. <laughs> it's just they're in user space somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Well, nobody knows how, how people use, or rather, they did not know how people would use uh, mailing list software. Uh, coming back to the story, so so you know, all of this happens, and you know, uh, two days later, I see a LWN Weekly Edition, and there's a story about this, and I go, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. So so what what did I learn? I I learned that uh, maintainership is uh, is not a lot about writing code it's more about uh, managing expectations working with people uh, it, it really is a people job as opposed to a coding job 
uh, and you know obviously you're expected to know what you're doing. I, uh, questions? Go ahead. I actually still get bug reports and fixes, and I have actually uh, I actually talked to a couple of folks who did send it, asking them to send it with. Uh, uh, we have certain standards that have to be met. We have a coding style. We have uh, the DCAO so that uh, we know where it has come from. Ask them to you know resend it with that, and they said, well, you know what, we'll keep it running the way it is. Uh, maybe sometime in the future, when we have more time, we will send it. And system D. Yes. And these programmers don't generally see it. Is that true? Put that layer on top of it. So, yes. And ideally, that is where you want it to be. That was also the goal of Lipsy Group that uh, higher level programmers wouldn't really have to see or care. Uh, but if you look at uh, uh, Google, if you look at uh, Ubuntu, has LXD. Uh, that's, yes, and then and then Google uses C groups directly for their massive fleet, so they want access to the API directly. But these are again specific, sorry, specific cases. Um, I I think Facebook uses it via System D. So, yes, sorry, we can we can talk about this uh, at the library. <laughs>